A few weeks ago, maybe actually two months now, when I got to Arizona, I was making a lot of videos of how I was working 14, 15 hours per day, working three full-time jobs. And I'm still working all of those jobs, every single one of them. But instead of working 14, 15 hours a day, I'm working two, three hours a day. And today I didn't even do that. Yesterday I didn't even do that. The day before that I didn't even do that. I've been, I, I've structured it to where I don't really have to do anything and I get the same results. Because at the end of the day, all these people care about are the is the outcome and not the process. They're not paying me for my time. They're paying me for what I produce. And PJ, when we were driving out of the gas station after getting 100 grams of protein each, like, how the hell do you do this every day? <laughs> and I don't know. I'm, I'm already getting bored of it. I've played pickleball 15 hours a day for the past four days. And I would rather do some sort of work, but I have nothing to do until I take on more work. So I honestly don't know what the hell to do. What do you, what do you do, PJ? And then, um, it's like, well, it's like, I feel like that's the goal initially. Like you want to get your business to that point where you can automate it because cause then now you're not trading your time and you're still getting the outcome for, yep. for your, your clients. But then it's like, you brought up the question too, after, you know, do I try and do something else? Do I start another business or do I try and grow this, you know, put more work into this business? Oh, of course I'm going to keep the same one that I have. Cause I've seen two different quasi, I would call them mentors. I just don't like the word do the two opposites. George, someone that I started working with, he would grow business really fast. He would be great at it. Then he would get bored and he would leave. And he would never get that compound and interest. Then you have Ken who he just stuck with one business and grew it. And Ken has a jet. Uh, he, Ken can go on vacation for a month and make more money at the end of the month than he did at the beginning and not check his phone or email the entire time because he's built this machine. So he can work whenever he wants to where George, he has the money that he's made from his businesses, but for him to make any additional money, which if he wants to do a bunch of things, he wants to work. Uh, he needs to make extra income because he just kept on growing businesses and he would leave. He did that a bunch of times and he was super successful with it, but he never took a company to a billion dollars like Ken. And it's not because he's not smart enough. It's just because it takes time to do that. And it, everything takes so much time to compound. You make so much more money from year 15 to 16 than you do from year one to five because you just compound it so much. So I, that, that's exactly what I'm going to do is just stick it out and hopefully have the snowball effect of not being too smart because Lord knows that that is definitely not my skill set is the big brain of my freaking dumb old skull. I, I just have seen what other people have done and it actually is quite simple. It's just, it's very hard. Do you know if, do you have any ideas for the future of maybe say different um, marketing strategies or things that you can add on to what you already offer to people with their like social media services that you do um, that you'd want to like start looking in for like for further into and then yeah trying to bring bring add that on to your yeah yeah your yeah I, I with Ken I'm trying to start a business with him right now and I'd get twenty percent equity or revenue which that's how I could triple my income because I would do all the work. When in reality, I would just hire someone to do all the work, but I know what needs to be done and how it needs to be formulated. And I would manage that. And I think we could do a hundred grand a month from that because it's Ken. And then that would, that would get me there. And then if you do that with every single person that you're working with, that could, that would, that would be a pretty quick way. And it's just create a more value. If I could 10 X, the number of views from Ken from here, from doing 2 million to 20, he would be, he would be making so much money. He wouldn't know what to do with it. So it's really just being better at what I do. All right. So we just finished, I don't know how much we played pickleball three times today, uh, worked out. So we're in a severe calorie deficit before I usually talk about something business or philosophical related. But today, we're just going to do a protein challenge because yeah. we, need, we need some calories. So, can't finish this video until I finish all these freaking 
protein bars and protein milks. Well, they're, they're so bad for you. But when you need protein, you need protein. So I had a ribeye for dinner. Just went for a nighttime pickleball session. And so right now I have one protein bar left. And a half of them, well, I guess a few bites. I am feeling deathly. Yeah, when did I was going to ask, when did your stomach start? <laughs> oh my god dude it hurts so bad all right Ugh. you're beating around the bush we don't do that dude when, you, when i heard that i almost did oh my god i'm on throat it's not even like that this much that nathan much. would kill us man. yeah uh, nathan's the buddy who told me to get a non-polyester underwear because that messes up your junk <laughs> because of the plastic in it but it actually does i the best underwear ever mogul i would start an underwear brand because of how good those are they are the best things in the world okay. I got a question for you. Uh, okay i noticed myself even too i'm probably not to nathan's extent when it comes to especially the knowledge but I definitely do kind of know what to look out for when it comes to certain ingredients. Like I know to stay away from like sunflower oil or so the soybean, but um, so definitely mostly food products because especially because I like I've, I've learned a lot about how to you know how to get the kind of body type I'm looking for and stuff, and then also what what's gonna help me just like feel the healthiest, have the most energy. But then my question is. Do you think sometimes looking so deep into that stuff does more detriment than it absolutely can? Just think of something like Warren Buffett, who's a hundred years old. He it's not like he eats great. He's this fat slob, or he's not a fat slob, but he's out of shape. It, it's kind of like Jason Hartman, which I disagree with him on a lot of things. I think he gets this nail on. There's so many people who prepare for the end of the world because he used to have a TV show or some sort of podcast where he would interview preppers who would go out of their way to prep to the highest possible degree. They would get a bunker. They would just have a year's worth of food supply, a year's worth of ammo, everything that they would ever need for the end of the world that they never live. I, I know a lot of people like that who prepare so hard for the end of the world that they will never live. And looking at this kind of stuff with the food i i see it as well but you also want to be as healthy as possible i mean that is the how what, well what do you think well i think there's definitely i think it could i think it, it's all about finding the, the balance i think if you're just gonna you know be a normal human being <laughs> <laughs> We did not find that balance. I mean, I guess you can say we did half the day up until now. Um, see, like we ate completely super healthy. healthy. Wait, super healthy. Chicken, chicken, hummus, steak, and fruit. Right. But keep going. But um, yeah, I think you got to find the. It definitely there, there's a couple ways to look at it too. Like you could. Well, what what, what do you do for yourself? Because I often talk about not being a normal person, nor wanting to be. Yeah. So for yourself, what would you prefer? Hmm, that's a good one. For my myself, like if I could have it all, like and or have my wish granted right for me, it would be I'd have the health kind of like how the situation we had when we stayed in Medellin, Colombia. We had we we're in 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 Medellin. We knew the. Uh, the meat that we're eating was a lot fresher, a lot less processed. Uh, we're staying away from all the bad things that you don't have to look, you know, so far into. You can kind of, over there, they just kind of call food, food. And it's not like you don't have to go and think, okay, this is organic, this is healthy. You and don't have to guess if there's strawberries in your strawberry milk. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that would be ideal where you just kind of have someone that knows that that's your goal. Like you want to just eat health, healthily that, you know, taking things that's going to, you know, give you the most nutrition, the best diet possible for your living situation. So that way you don't have to put your mind on it and it's all just kind of set in stone. Obviously that's not, is it realistic to have a full-time chef right, and maid? Right. Obviously no. that's not realistic. 
But um, so you said you the question was, is it yeah. worth it to spend all this time researching what's bad for you? I think it definitely. It, it, it also depends your interest too, because me personally, I am interested in that stuff. But well, I'll take it back to the prepper analogy. I think it's good to know of the possibilities and to be prepared. Oh, but yeah. if you're if you, but I don't think you should live your life that way. So I, for the most part, eat one ingredient foods. I try and eat things that are don't have a list of forty five things that I don't know what they are. For me, that is an ideal diet if I'm eating anything that is grown from the earth naturally. Some does do I do that one hundred percent of the times? So no, I'll get pizza uh, if I'm out. I'm not going to bring my own lunch because I won't eat whatever they're serving in the kitchen. But I will, for the most part, try and be healthy. Uh, but I mean, ideally, of course, you're always eating healthy. But I know myself, I like to eat food. I'm, I'm just going to make sure I don't get fat and I'm always staying in really good shape. And just whatever makes you feel good. After the steak, some, you know, after you eat a big meal, usually what you want to do is lay down on the couch and take a nap. We went straight to go work out because of how fired up you feel after eating a big old steak. So, and it tasted really good. So when you have a win-win like that, why the hell wouldn't you eat? Why the hell wouldn't you eat that? Right. Did you finish your, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Um, yeah, I'm about to be on my uh, last couple of sips. Done with protein. Yeah. Fuck, I feel so gross right now. Oh, I feel so disgusting. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you you do this to your toilet like yeah the the problem is it's kind of just like you have this idea and when there's enough testosterone in the room you're like <laughs> what if we what if we eat all this <laughs> yeah. like we'd be pussies not to yeah. so then it's just like all right let's just do the protein challenge and then BJ was like why didn't we get more protein <laughs> <laughs> See, my initial thought process is. Well, at first I thought you were, you were like, you like, this is the stupidest idea ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, that, there's no reason to do this right now. Then you get it in the head and then it becomes a yeah. competition. And, and well, then I know he's going to do it. So I'm like, I can't not eat my two protein bars and protein shakes and just watch him, you know, <laughs> and be like, oh no, I'm going to, I'm going to try one of my protein bars and then eat the rest tomorrow. Yeah. So that, that's why, that's why you need friendly yeah, competition. Yeah. I already said it twice. I I got a different YouTube channel banned already, uh, surprisingly. But that's why you need the competition. If we say to us or another buddy or four, let's go to the gym, and every single one's like, "Oh, I went to the gym with this morning. I'll go again later." You're like, fuck, I didn't go to the gym this morning. <laughs> and then you just constantly want to be better. PJ, this is the guy I was talking about when I was making the analogy. He was saying, "Dude, I my diet is." absolutely dialed in i just finished a three-day fast watch out i'm like fuck as i was <laughs> as i, as I right. had this massive triple cheeseburger with cheesy french fries <laughs> sitting next to me and i'm taking a bite looking at that text message yeah. i'm like i gotta get on my damn grind so that is, that's why you want the friendly competition because it makes you do a hundred times better and when you're surrounding yourself with people that make a hundred times more money even right now where I'm living the lifestyle, if I was having a hundred times more money, like PJ, how cool is it to drive in that car? Oh my gosh, it's unreal. I, like, I felt like we've been in a movie all day. Did, I've been, we've been saying that all day. Does it not make you want to make a hell of a lot more money so that you can oh. take a drive a car like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it shows that like, I mean, we kind of brought up this point too. It's like, you know, people say money, money can't buy happiness, but like, but, <laughs> we're, think about this. Think about our situation right now. It's 95 degrees in Arizona. Imagine driving a 2006 uh, Honda Accord that the AC is broken in. <laughs> or imagine driving, what, what do you call this? The Speedster? The, the Speedster Porsche throwback. Like They actually uh, they actually the, call it like the, the big boat or something. Like a, like a, a bubble yeah. bath boat or something like that because it's shaped like one but it it's it, it looks like a like a go-kart but like so vintage it looks and, like what james bond yeah. would be pulling up to save the day yeah exactly and the top's down and you're just chilling and and the, the sun sun's on face, you, the wind the coming wind. exactly it's, it's, that that made that experience a lot more joyful than if you're in the high <laughs> court oh it does um so it definitely shows you know that uh, it'd be nice to be able to afford certain things that you, you know. and it's mainly the freedom, the freedom of, Hey, 
let's just travel here, go play some pickleball, do whatever the hell right. we want. We'll get breakfast, we'll get lunch or whatever. Uh, not even think about it. Like absolutely no thought. And when you only surround yourself with people who can do that, you will figure uh -huh. out a way to do that. For some, for some reason, it's just, you train your brain to think in the same terms that they're talking in. Because when Ken, he's just scoffs at an idea if it couldn't make him a hundred million dollars. Now, for better or worse, I unfortunately do the same thing. It might not be 10, it might be 10 million, but I will not even think of an opportunity if it can't scale to something very, very large, simply because of the fact that I, I want the leverage. Because I know so many small business owners who have a restaurant and they work a million times harder than me and a million times harder than Ken, but they will never make as much money as him because unless they franchise it off, which is even more work, it's just, it doesn't have the scalability. And there's so much that goes into it. It's so difficult where a lot of businesses, there's just so much opportunity to expand where you don't have to worry about those kinds of things. So protein challenge done. Toilet has an incoming uh, problems. But anyway, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. PJ, thank you. Peace. Nice to talk to you guys. This is me about 10 minutes after the challenge. I am dying. My stomach, <laughs> I want to just rapidly throw everything up right now. Warning, please do not try this at home.